different in this video as regards a method to catch bass and that's using one of these which some, some of you may be familiar with but it's called for those of you who are not it's called a bombarder float and it's a self-weighted float that you can get that floats or you can actually get them that, that sink and what it's used for is a weight to be able to cast out a distance very 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 lightweight lures that would that would, would be impossible to cast out from the shore with a normal spinning rod things like virtually weightless soft soft plastics but it's mainly used as an alternative to conventional fly fishing to be able to cast out flies now I understand I may be wrong that this originated from Scandinavia just for that purpose for those people that wanted to want to fish flies for for trout and sea trout with a spinning rod in other words without your normal fly fish, fishing setup where you've got the weight of the fly line to get the fly out now because this is this is self weighted and it means that you can cast a virtually weightless fly a great distance and I've got two this one's 30 gram floating and the other one we're going to look at them in a moment is 20 gram floating which suits suits the conditions that I fish in so basically how it works is you've got your leader coming down from your rod tip the line goes straight through the middle of the float comes out the other end you pop a bead on then you pop a swi swivel and then you have your length of, of, of line your trace down to whatever whatever lightweight lure you're using in my case saltwater flies you cast it out and as I said because of this weight it enables you to get a great distance you cast it out and you just draw it in and with the floating ones your lure whatever you're using will work just under the surface but of course if you go for the sinking ones the idea is that if you want to work a lure a little bit deeper now this sort of fishing for bass is not actually new I can remember years ago when people actually used a Jif lemon as a weight and a float it was called it's called a Jif lemon rig so what they did personally I never I never used it but what they did was drilled a hole each end of a Jif lemon put some weight in it by filling it whatever whatever was needed whatever weight you wanted fill it fill, filling it with wax something like candle wax threading your line through put on a swivel on on the other end and then your length of, of trace down to a soft plastic which was usually in those days using um, a red gill which of course is is not which of course you can't you wouldn't be able to cast out very far with a spinning rod so because of that the weight of the jiff lemon uh, lemon you could cast out these lightweight lures a great distance and then just dr dr draw it in and it actually worked the other alternative that was sometimes used is the bubble float same thing line goes through um, and the bubble float is filled half filled with water that gives you, gives you the weight to get those lightweight lures out and again draw it draw it in but these are much much better one because of the fact they're self-weighted and two they're very streamlined which means that when you cast it out and you're pulling it through the water you haven't got much resistance or much disturbance that you might get if you're trying to pull something like a bubble bubble float through the through the surface of the water they're streamlined so a much much better better idea and they work much much better hopefully as you'll see later okay so now the setup that I'm using in the footage you see you'll you will see is I've got a nine foot spinning rod I've gone for the longest spinning rod that I've got which in my case is nine foot and I'll explain why in a, in a moment usual setup 4,000 size uh, reel in my case I've got 20 pound braid and I've got a 15 pound fluorocarbon leader which is just a little bit more than twice the length of the rod and then 
what I've done, as said, I've thread the, the Bombarda float on the leader. This is, this is, this is the 20 gram floating one that I've got. Thread that on and then the bead and then a swivel and then my trace down to, down to the, the fly. Now the length, the longer trace you can have, that distance between the float to the, to the lure, the better. But it's got to be practical to be able to cast. With this nine foot rod, I can have a, a, a trace length of a, between five and six feet and it works well, I can cast it out. But obviously longer than that, it would be very difficult, unpractical to cast. <coughs> Excuse me. Now I understand, I may be wrong, that where they do this out in Scandinavia for the trout and the sea trout, they use long spinning rods, maybe 11 foot, 12 foot uh, spinning rod. And that enables them to use a long trace, maybe let's say up to, let's say up to about nine foot and still, still make it practical to cast. But in my case, five to six foot. And as you see, as you'll see later, that's absolutely fine. It work, it works well. All right, now before we get to the, to the fishing, I wanna just talk about these, these saltwater flies. Now I took up saltwater, some of you will know, others won't. I took up saltwater fly fishing last year for the first time after 50, 55 years of normal fishing. Took up, took up that and what I have learned is how fantastic some of these saltwater flies are uh, are, 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 are as catchers of bass and other species. But not just me, because I'm just a beginner at it, but I've witnessed, I've been involved in a saltwater fly fishing festival, uh, festival down in St Moors. This will be the fourth year, which is held every September, where you get some really experienced and well-known fly anglers, fly fishers, come and compete in it. And the amount of bass that these anglers catch in a, in a day and a half's fishing is absolutely amazing. Admittedly, a lot of them are small bass, but that's only because uh, that's it's mainly small bass uh, that are that are around. But a, but a, a few of them have pulled in some really good bass and and other species as well. So this highlighted to me that these are absolutely brilliant. But of course, not not everyone wants to take up uh, conventional fly fishing. So again, this is another alternative. If you don't want to do that, well, you can fish these fantastic saltwater flies or other very lightweight uh, soft plastics, be able to get them out there a distance and just, and just reel, reel them in. Okay, so we go to the fishing and I'll show you this working. Just one thing to say, it's windy, breezy day. There's a bit of wind noise on the camera. Not much I can do about it. But the other thing is I had technical problems. I've been trying to use a, a mic for my videos recently to, to improve the the sound, get stereo sound. I did that, but when I got back and reviewed the, the sound, unfortunately I had technical, technical problems of too much movement and, and scratching on the mic. So I had to scrap that sound and just, just use the camera sound. Okay, I'm ready to start fishing. It's about just under an hour now before low water. So the plan is to fish down to low water and then fish the first two, maybe three hours of the flooding tide. Got a good spring tide at the moment, so there's, there'll be, there'll be a pl plenty of movement. Movement. I've got the 20 gram Bombarda float on. I, I won't need any heavier than that. Just a very, very light breeze, breeze today. And I'm going to start with a sandal flies, some sandal flies. See how we go with those. Um, but I've got other flies with me. I've got some bait fish flies as well. But we'll, we'll start with the sandal flies. And hopefully, fingers crossed, I'll be able to show you this method actually catching fish. All right, so the idea is I'm just going to slowly retrieve this in. And, and I've got a fish. Very, very f f first cast. He 
be interesting. Now, what was I, what I was saying is I've just very slowly retrieved this in. I don't have to worry about about um, the, the, because the float floats and the and the fly will with a slow retrieve will work literally just under the surface and it, and it is it's a little bass. That's a great start. It do be something a bit bigger than that, though. But so there is a there's a huge amount of um, of, of those sorts small bass here. Um, but fingers crossed. I mean, they they give fantastic sport, of course. Um, fingers crossed. We we'll try and get something a little bit a little bit bigger than that. Right, just a slow retrieve. Don't have to do anything. Just wind it in. Oh, there was another touch there. Yeah, just had a knock there. Amazing how well these, as I, as I mentioned earlier, how well these uh, saltwater flies work. Little tip I can give you if you do try this method, because you're because you're fishing quite a uh, you're fishing a long trace. In my case, it's about five and a half six foot. Obviously, when it flies through the air, there is there is the potential that it, the the fly might come back and, and tangle around your main line. But a little tip is just before it hits the water, just stop it to try and get it to all to, to try and get it to all unfold. Uh, properly rather than just casting it out and letting it fall into the water into a bunch and and that that goes a long way to to stop stop the the lure the fly tangling tangling around your main line so I'm just going to hit the water so I'm just going to stop it and hopefully that will turn the fly over and, and straighten it out so we, so we don't get any tangles to try and show you this on the surface obviously if, if it floats as we as we know um, but it <coughs> sits sits parallel to the seabed like that and just creates a little bit of, of a wake because it's quite streamlined it creates just a little bit of a wake no 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 different than if you were uh, maybe fishing a um, let's say a surface plug uh, d doing a walk doing a walk the dock to try and show you that so yeah, it just creates a little bit of wake in its path, but it but not too much not too much disturbance because it's streamlined. I had a little a little knock and didn't get it, and then uh, it came back for for it, or another one took it. Feels better fish. Well, just go show this method. Method works. If you want to find a way of fishing these these lightweight, weightless lures, like uh, saltwater flies, and you don't want to take up, you're not interested in taking up fly fishing. This is an alternative.
Better fish. Great, great sport. To see if we can get something about twice the size of, of that. Just goes to show actually that the wake, the little wake that this, this float creates as it's being drawn across the surface with the with the fly probably only about five and a half foot six foot behind it doesn't put the fish off of, off in any way at all well I decided to have a change of fly and the main reason is I just wanted to experiment with different flies today um, not just for this fishing but for my uh, normal saltwater fly fishing I've got I've got some flies that I've never tried before and that one that I just caught those few bass on was the first time so an, another another sand eel imitation fly and um, we'll, we'll see how this one goes right and a little quiet spell over the over the low water period which can often happen around the slack water period but we're we're about uh, nearly half an hour into the flood now and got another little bass I changed the uh, I changed the fly again I didn't have any luck on that other fly I mean it may not be the fly um, it could be just the time I was using it so I've uh, changed back again to that one which I've had a bit of bit of success with with the normal fly fishing but again another sandy limitation This one I thought I thought I'd caught I'd caught I'd caught some weed with this one. It just sort sort of felt dead. Um, it must have it must have picked it up and swam swam forward a bit with it. better yeah this is That's better. Well, that's the best one of the session so far. Oh, just had a pull then. And we're in. Ah, good. Now the tide, uh, the tide is flooding in well. There's a few fish showing. Well, I can tell you these these saltwater flies for fly fishing. They really, they really do. Uh, catch okay we all we know we know they're all small bass but they catch good bass as well if the good bass are around go oh, and a knock and we're in
Oh, this is great fun, and I, I can't, you know, I can't think of a a simpler way of fishing than this. Yep, another knock, and again, and we're in. Well, it's a it's a Fisher cast at the moment. Just God, just wish there was some. Um... Some bigger fish around. I might, I might in a, a moment, just an experiment. I might put a bait fish fly on, which is slightly bigger, just to see see if that um, attracts any bigger fish. But the thing is, you know, it's not going to make any difference if the bigger fish if the bigger fish are not there. Um, it's not going to make much difference. Well, that's not a bad one. Yep. All right, what I've decided to do is change the fly. Even though I've caught quite a lot of bass on the sandhill flies, I'm going to take a chance. I'm going to change the change the fly to this fly, a slightly bigger fly. A bait fish fly, just as an experiment, really, to to, uh, to see if this will also catch. And just out of interest for you fly anglers and for me, what I've been using today is to clip the flies on and change the flies. I've got one of these little mini mini clips that someone suggested when I did a fly fishing video last year, normal fly fishing video, uh, mini clips. And so far. It's worked fine, so I might actually go with that. It certainly hasn't put the fish off, that's for sure. I might go with that uh, when I do the, the conventional fly fishing. Okay, let's see how this... See if this bait fish fly works using this method. I always think when changing lures, if you've been catching with a certain type of lure, um, it's a, it, it is risky um, to know whether you'll carry on catching, but 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 sometimes sometimes of course you've got to um, you've got to experiment. And the reason I want to try this bait fish fly is, to, is to just to see if there are if there are any um, better sized bass around. If if that might might attract them the slightly bigger fly but uh, say it, it may not or they or they just might not be here well I never even had a touch on that bait fish fly so so I've gone gone back to the sand eel fly um, if that's what they want even if even if it is only the um, the small bass Quite interesting, actually. I was getting a a Fisher Fisher cast at one point, changed to the bait fish fly, and uh, not even a touch. Right. Ah. Doesn't seems to re yeah. Seems not too bad this one. That's so in that's interesting, isn't it? I could couldn't get a touch on that bait fish fly. I'll put the sand eel fly back on and well not immediately but I, a fish again. Now oh, this yeah this could be yeah this could be the best of the day. In fact I think it is. Yep it is.
Yep, definitely the best of the day. Just like that. If, if, only, if only it was that easy all of the time. That's bass. Yeah, but it, 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 it's, it's too small to, to keep. It's gonna go, it's gonna go back, so say bye. <laughs> I'm not sure to be honest, but um, I, I think um, I'd, um, yeah, I think it's more than that, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, you get yourself on YouTube. I'm, I, I make fishing videos. Oh, okay, fair enough. Strict, strictly no internet. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, there's plenty. It was caught on a fly for fly fishing. Yeah. <laughs> nice to talk to you. Well, sorry, I, I, I wanted to show you that, hold that one up and show you it, but um, <laughs> just chatting to that lady, the audience there. Um, yeah, I think uh, that was that was the that was the best one of the best one of the session. Actually, here's a interesting thing to uh, re regarding normal normal bass fishing with lures. Now, I'm just re just uh, retrieving this in behind the float. Now, this of course has got absolutely no action to it no, whatsoever, no wobble, and all I'm doing is just doing a slow and steady retrieve. And it just goes to show. So if you if you think about the way uh, we fish, I try and show you the way you fish lures such as senkos, uh, where it's just bait or or some needle fish. Where basically you can see that there, it's just nothing. It's just going trailing through the water, no action. Uh, things like senkos and um, needle fish, just straight bait, basically. Uh, I suppose you sort of stick bait type things. No action, just moves through the water. But I'll tell you what though, don't, doesn't that look good? No wonder, no wonder these things catch. I am absolutely convinced that if there was bigger bass around, they would, they would definitely go for that. And it works with the float here and, and that uh, trace of about, about five, five or six foot. It, you draw that in and, and it works literally just under the surface just exactly the same as the way as as a um a, a needlefish or a senko or even a, a weightless a weightless sluggo would work with just a slow retrieve well i've got to go soon and the fishing seems to have gone gone very quiet now anyway Plus I'm getting a more of a weed problem as the tide's really flooding in now. There's more and more weed coming in. It's causing a bit of a problem. So I'm going to call it a day. But for those of you that are looking for a, a different fun way to target bass and a way to fish these very light uh, weightless lures that you basically you just can't cast out. Um, a way to fish those. Um, give, it, give it a go. It, it, it's a... There they go, talking about the weed. This is what I'm talking about. It's a very, very, very simple, fun way of, of fishing. Just cast it out and retrieve it in. And these, as I said before, these saltwater flies used for conventional fly fishing really, do, really do work well for for, for the for our for our bass and other species as well. And again, it's an alternative for those of you that 
maybe you want to fish saltwater flies and you but you don't really want to take up saltwater fly fishing you can pick these these bombarda floats up uh, very very cheaply 20 30 gram and they work much better the alternative of course would be a bubble float but the great thing about them is because you don't need to fill them with water they're self-weighted and they're much more streamlined so they they move through the they move through the water glide through the water really great yeah it's it's a really fun simple very very simple way of fishing gonna have a couple more casts but basically once again I hope you found that useful and many many thanks for watching